Welcome to ITTV for Form 1 Science. Today we enter into Chapter 3 and we will be investigating understanding that matter has mass and occupies space. Now in our universe around us, we use the word matter for anything that we can touch, hold, lift, pick up, push, anything. Matter basically is everything around us. It is the air around us that we feel blowing on our face. It is the water that we drink. It is the horse running in the field or the chicken running on a farm. All these things are basically made out of matter. In fact, you and I are also made out of matter. In science, we use the word matter to describe what makes up everything around us. So this means everything around us is made out of matter. Whether the object is a non-living or a living thing. Whether it's, like I said, horses, chickens, fish, you, me, or non-living things like the rocks, the water, the mountains, the snow. All of these are also definitely made out of matter. Every living and non-living thing in our universe is made up of matter. And matter itself is made up from small tiny particles which we know to be called atoms. And these atoms, as they sit together with each other, basically will make up the shape of any given object. Plants, animals, soil, rocks, air and water are all made of matter. And when you build something up from matter, this material is going to have a certain amount of mass and a certain amount of volume as you put all of this matter together. Each atom has a mass. If you put 10 billion atoms together, the mass of the object becomes 10 billion times the mass of one atom. Each atom has a volume. If you put 10 billion of these atoms next to each other, they will also have a volume equivalent to roughly 10 billion times the volume of the one atom. All matter can be found in the form of a solid, such as a book, a liquid, such as water, or a gas, such as oxygen. Which is to say that we classify matter into three main groups, which is solids, liquids, and gases. Now, in the slide that you can see at home, can you identify for me the three states of matter that you can see in the picture? Take your time, have a close look at it. Remember, our three states of matter are gas, solid and liquid. And what you want to try and find is one of each. So if you take a close look at the slide, let's start with the solid. The solid that we can see is the glass or the cubes of ice inside the liquid. I've given you a hint for the second one already. The liquid is the drink inside the glass. Finally, we're looking for gas. The gas is represented by the bubbles that are coming up to the surface and jumping out from inside the liquid. So in this one diagram, we can see the three states of matter in one place at one time. The solid ice and glass, the liquid for the drink, and the gas, which is the bubbles that are being released. 
core concept and definition. All matter has mass, which means it can be weighed, and volume, which means it takes up space. And this is true for all our matter, solid, liquid or gas. So before we move on, one of the things that we must do in science is, whenever we are faced with a core concept or definition, we need to prove it by experiment or demonstration. So what we're going to do is try to prove that solids, liquids and gases have mass and occupy space, which is to say they have a volume. We'll start off with solids. What I have in front of me here are some weights. These are weights that we use here in the laboratory. These weights have been weighed so that we know the mass of the weights. Now, if you have a look at these weights, just written on them very lightly is the mass of it. Example, this weight has a mass of 10 grams. This weight here has a mass of 5 grams. This weight here has a mass of, I'll just turn it over, this one is a bit upside down. This one has a mass of 10 grams as well. So each one of these solid objects, so that's a solid, has a mass. So what do we understand from this? Solids have mass. But does it have a volume? Well, in order to investigate the volume, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the volume displacement method, which we learned in chapter one. I have some liquid inside this measuring cylinder. The liquid in here has a volume of 40 ml or 40 centimeter cube. I'm going to drop one of the solids into this liquid. What I hope to see is that the level of the liquid is going to go up. If the level of the liquid goes up, what made it go up would be the volume of the solid that I put inside it. If the volume goes up, this means that solids have a volume. So I'm going to drop this inside here. Like so. There we go. Now I'm going to take the new volume and hopefully it is slightly more than what I had just now. Well, it certainly is. My volume has gone up by one centimeter cube. It is now 41. Just now it was 40. So what does this tell me? Well, it tells me that solids have a mass, solids have a volume, which means solids are a type of matter. So we've got solids out of the way and we've proven the concept. But what about liquids? Do liquids have a mass and do liquids have a volume? Well, with this one, I'm going to use a bit of a different technique. Firstly, I'm going to use a bit of feeling and secondly, I'm going to use some observation. Here is a very light measuring cylinder. Okay? It's empty and dry. There's nothing in it whatsoever. Firstly, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pour some water inside here. When I pour the water in here, like so. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to measure the volume. By measuring the volume, what I'm saying to you is that the liquid, which is the water, has a volume. So I'm just going to take this reading here. Okay, put my hand behind it so I get a very nice clear view. And I get a reading of 40, sorry, I beg your pardon, 28 centimeters cubed which means that the liquid inside here has a volume. Now, remember when I started, 
I picked up the measuring cylinder and I said it was quite light. Now when I hold the measuring cylinder, it is heavier. What makes it heavier is the liquid inside it. So this feeling of the weight increasing tells me that the liquid inside this measuring cylinder has a mass. Liquid has a mass and it has a volume. Which means that liquids are a type of matter. The solid had a mass and a volume, it is a type of matter. The liquid has a volume and a mass, it is also a type of matter. But what about gas? Now gas is very tricky because it's very hard to measure the volume of a gas. But using a very simple and old experiment with the two balloons here, we can sort of get an idea about volume. Now, what I have here are two balloons. You can see that the balloon has filled up with gas. This means that the balloons must have a volume. Because really, originally, although this is a slightly different colour, a balloon is empty. It has no volume inside it. When I blow the gas into the balloon, it fills up. Now this means that the gas must have a volume and the volume is equal to the size of that balloon. So the first part we've got that gases have a volume but do they have a mass? Now this is the tricky part. So both these balloons are hanging at the same height and balancing each other as you can see which means that if they do have a mass they must be equal. What I'm going to do now is burst one of the balloons. So let's see what happens when I burst a balloon. I'm just going to hang on to this a bit because when you burst the balloon, it tends to jump. So I'm going to burst this balloon here. One, two, burst. Now when I let it go, notice how it tilts down like this. Well, the difference between this balloon, which is empty, and this balloon which is full is that this balloon has gas in it which must mean that this balloon has a mass which is being created by the gas inside it. What does this experiment tell me? Gas has a volume and occupies space and number two, gas has a mass. So from the three experiments or the demonstrations that you have just seen, we know that solids, liquids and gas have a mass. Solids, liquids and gas all occupy space and therefore have volume. If all these three states have mass and volume, they must be classified, must be classified as matter. Get it? Very good. Let's move on. What is matter? So this is a definition that you have to do for me. What is matter? Can you make a list of everything that you see that you think to be matter? Doesn't matter what it is. It could be the carpet, a chair, a table, your mom, your car, your bicycle, your cat, your fish. Make a list of everything that is matter. Remember, we've said that matter is everything living or non-living. Have at least 10 to 15 things that you can think of in your list of matter. And it doesn't matter what it is. It could be something weird like butter or syrup or something very large like a hill or a mountain or something tiny like an ant. All of these are matter. Make that list. Next, what I would like you to do is state for me the three types of matter. 
Now, we've just gone through a list of the types of matter. So, we want to classify them into three groups. Solid, liquid and gas. Go to your list. Pick out all the solids in your list and put them in the solid column. After you've done that, go back to that list. Pick out all the liquids and then write all the liquids under the liquid column. Finally, gases. Pick some gases and write them down under the gas column. If you find that your list didn't have one or two of the states, well now it's time for you to think about that and add some other examples to your list. If you didn't have a gas, add a gas. If you didn't have a liquid, add a liquid. Do you get the idea? Good. I want these two things done, so please make sure you do do them. Next, all matter has blank and occupies blank. So remember, this comes from the experiments that we did, where we proved that all matter had mass and all matter have a volume or you can say occupies space. Sort of gave you the answer for this one, didn't I? Never mind. Still, nonetheless, I want you to fill these in. So three things, make that list and then take everything in the list and put it into groups of solid, liquid and gas. And then right at the end of that, write out this sentence. All matter has blank and occupies blank. Okay? Then, and this is the tricky part, after you have written down the sentence, which is, matter has mass and occupies space, can you try to write it down as if you were looking at it in a mirror? Which means I want you to write it backwards. Not sure what I mean? Well, look, I'll give you an example. If you look at the slide, you'll see the mirror there. What I need is for you to write it like this, backwards. So, you're writing Sasam Sa Retnam Se Puko Dina Ak Aps, which, if you read it the other way, states matter has mass and occupies space. I'd like you to do that with every major definition you learn in your Form 1, Form 2 and Form 3. Any definition you have, write it backwards. It helps for you to remember the definition if you work at writing it backwards. Now that you've got your tasks to do, let's continue on with the lesson. There are some key words that you might not understand, so let's go through them. Air in Bahasa is Udara. Living things in Bahasa is Benda Hido. Mass in Bahasa is Jisim. Matter in Bahasa is Jirim. Occupies in Bahasa is Mamanohi. Water in Bahasa is Ai. Soil in Bahasa is Tana. That's all the time we have for in this lesson. Thank you for watching ITTV.